the improved Euler's formula. And as with the other numerical methods, we need to solve the first order differential equation for the derivative in order to implement these. And that will be our function f, a function of both x and y, and we'll use that in the loop of the program or in the calculations that we do. So this example, we have y prime plus 3y on the left. So we actually do have to do this step as opposed to the first example. It's pretty easy to get it solved for y prime, right? Just uh, subtract 3y from both sides. There we go. We've got x squared plus y squared. Minus 3xy minus 3y. So that will be our f of xy. So we can already set up what all our x values are going to be. We're starting at 0, right? There's our initial condition is x is 0, y is 2. So we will start with 0. And we're going in steps of 500, so we're 0 0.05. So 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, dot, dot, dot don't have an ending point specified, but uh, you'd have to tell your program where to stop, right? Or be stuck in an infinite loop. Um, I mean, I guess we're just going to do two or three steps, so we can stop it at point two. Okay, so let's figure out what the slopes are using this function. And we're going to figure out what the slope is when x is 0. We're going to figure out what it is when x is 0 0.05, right, the next point. Uh, and then we're going to average those two together. So the first slope is k10. And that's where you use the initial conditions. This is actually the same one we did for Euler's method. So x is 0, and y is 2, right? And that is just 4, is that right? 4? That is not finished. I think I had the wrong function. Here is the slope at a given point x, y. So x is 0, and y is 2. Right. Yeah, that part's gone. So we do have the 4, but there's a 4 minus 6, so it would actually be negative 2. All right, now for k20, we're going to use the same function for finding the slope. We're just going to use different x values and y values. x is going to be the next x value. So we start at 0, we're taking a step to 0 0.05. Right, 0 0.05, so we'll use that for x. So 
replace x with 0, 5. And the y value that you're going to use is actually given here. You take the initial y value, 2, and then you add h times the k10 that we just found. Um, this is actually the y value you would get using Euler's method. So it's like we use Euler's method and we're going to use that y value and the next x value as our estimate of the second slope. So what is this, right? Well, y0 is 2. And let me put this here first. So y0 is 2, and h is 0 0.05, and k10, that's our first slope, was negative 2. Negative two. So what happens when you multiply h and k10 and then add it to y0? So you get 2 plus 0 0.05 times negative 2. So it's 1.9, right? Uh, just simplifying the base on that exponential, right? Because uh, 0 0.05 times negative 2 is negative 0 0.1. 2 minus 0 0.1 is 1.9. So you can replace all the y values with 1.9. And we can then get our second slope by simplifying that. Negative two point three seven two five. So you can see that the slope is decreasing from negative two to something smaller, and this takes that into account. Instead of just marching along at that slope of negative two, which is what it is at the start, it's saying, well, hey, the slope is going to be smaller later on, let's go ahead and average these two together and use that as our slope. So to get our y value, we take the first y value, the initial condition of 2, and we add to it the change in y, which is found from the product of the step size, right? that's our change in x times the slope. And for slope, we're using the average of these two slopes. So negative 2 and negative 2.3725. So add those together, divide by 2. That'll give you your average slope. And then you should be able to get the y1 value. Getting one point eight nine zero 
it's already probably approximating. Um, how many how many times or how many steps would you actually want us to uh, potentially do something like this? Like maybe three max. Yeah, so just doing this once is kind of a pain. I I think the practice problems have you do one or two steps. Is that right? Two. Two? Two, okay. yeah, that's, that's, that's nicer than three, right? Uh, and so that's all you'd be expected to do on an exam as well. But now we start the process over. So we've, we've got our y1, and our estimate is that it's uh, x is 2.05 and y is 1.89. And we can then repeat this process to march along as many times as we want. So I'm going to go ahead and do it one more time so we get a better picture of the pattern. And then uh, we'll go over to Sage for the rest. So K11 is going to be very similar to K10. We use the same derivative function, uh, but we are now using the new y1 and the new x1. So we, we've stepped forward with x, we've stepped forward with y. Uh, x is we already knew, that's uh, 0 0.05. Right? And the y1 we just found. That was the end of the first calculation above. So for y, we're going to put in So it looks something like that. This is tedious. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty slick, but it's tedious. Yeah, I, after the first time of doing it, I'm fine with saying, OK, I know what's going on. I'm done. Yeah. Uh, now, using a number like this, 1.8906875, we can take advantage of what the calculator's been doing and use the second answer feature. So um, let me type it, and then I'll show you. So anytime you want to use that number, it is stored because it was the previous calculation, right? So I got that 1.8906875, and it probably has a couple more digits in there unless it's terminating there. Um, and I can use that by just hitting second and the uh, negative sign, at least on this one. But most calculators have some way to recall the previously stored answer without having to type it. So I think that made it a lot easier for me to type all that in and still get as much accuracy on that number as I can. What uh, so operation did you perform to, uh, on that 83 to keep the second and then the enter key? Okay. And with the newer ones, I mean, if you have like the newer 84s, you can actually use these arrows and go up to it. And you can like grab it like you're copying and pasting. You just go up and hit enter and it'll throw it down there. So there might be other ways. Um, and there is also storing it. I mean, you can store it as something. But it's going to change the next time around, so I don't know if that's really worth it. Okay. So all that was to get this. And you see the slope continues to decrease here, right? It was negative 2, and now it's at negative 2.37, 8.4, 6.6, 4.02. And so forth. All right. Um, let's find K21. That's when we'll really kind of know what's going on with this or not. So 
So as with any of the k's, we are finding the value of the derivative. So we'll start with that. And it's just a question of what are we using for x and what are we using for y. So for the x, we're using the next step, just like we did before, uh, x2 in this case, which is actually 0 0.1. Right? I mean, we're now at 0 0.05. We're stepping to 0 0.1. Remember, the numbering is weird because the index starts it. So 0 is x0, 0, 0 0.05 is x1. Uh, that's x2. Maybe these should be labeled. Okay, so we're going to put in 0 0.1 for x, 1 tenth. What about y? So we have to do the weird thing with y that we did before, where we're essentially using the first k value to take an Euler method approximation to get our y value. Right? That's our way of looking at what the derivative would be at the next step. So uh, we'll be using k11 and h and the previous y1 in that formula there. As, as the y parameter to the uh, original function? Right. So I'm going to go ahead and show this in a couple steps. So y is replaced with y1 plus h times k11. And y1 was that uh, 1.89 oh wait, yeah that's what it was, right? 1.890675 Remember that? And h is 0 0.05. And k11 is the number we just found right here. So negative 2.37. That should also be stored in your calculator. So now we're going to figure out what that is. Just in the parentheses there, you know, what is a good approximation for this number. So we'll do times 0.5. And I'm getting 1.771764186418. Does that seem right? Anybody else get that? So I'm going to use that. It's our second slope. Each time we're going to get two slopes, and then we're going to average them. So it's it's our estimate of the slope at x2. We're looking at the functional value. We're looking at our y value, the change in our y yeah. one and y2. Yeah, that's what we're watching. So you know, here's where I might really take advantage of what's going on with the calculator. Uh, I've got k1 stored here. And remember how I found k or where I found y1? Wait. Mm -hmm. right, cool. okay, I'm still trying to get k21. All right. So to get k21, I need to do all this calculation. The k20 formula is very similar. So I can actually take the k20 formula and edit that. If I wasn't having to explain it, it might have actually been quicker. So um, if I hit second enter a couple times, I can sort of pull up previous results. And this was the calculation for k20. Now, ours is a little different. We're writing k20? 
uh, we're getting K21, but it's the same basic formula in that we're using the answer previously calculated. Uh, the differences would be that this 0 0.05 is now a 0 0.1. K21, we, we only need uh, K11, right? We only need K20. No, I'm just saying we're trying to get K21, and it's this formula here. And rather than having to type all this in to a calculator, you could take advantage of the fact that this number is already calculated. I just have that as my previously stored answer. And this formula as a whole is very similar to this formula. Mm -hmm. all right. Yeah, once you have your K, your, once you have your K21, just, uh, you can take the average within, you know. So the di main difference is uh, 1.9 changes. So we're using that. And then the 0.05 changes to a 0.1. Anyway. Just trying to say that there are shortcuts to be had. And I end up getting negative 2.697. So you're still getting steeper, essentially, because yes. K21 is just a steeper negative slope than K11. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, so we're going from negative 2.3 to negative 2.7. So definitely getting steeper. All right, let's average those slopes and use the typical formula to advance to the next y value. All right, so our previous y value was the 1.890675. H is the same, it's always 0 0.05. And then my K11 and K21, I have just calculated. So it's going to average those K values and Multiply by H and then add it to the previous Y value. Talk about that okay. after the video, just because people watching the video might be in a completely different situation, right? Because it'll be an online class. All right, so when I do all this, I get y sub two is one point seven six three seven eight four zero zero three. I continue this process on. Next, I would be 2. And you could get K12 and K22 and Y3 and so on and so forth. I think you get the idea from here. So we can find the error. To do that, we need our y values. So starting off, y was 2. And then it was 1.890.6875. And then the second one we found was this one. Uh, we need an exact solution to go along with this to find the error. Have an exact solution. It is not <laughs> linear. It is not a
Bernoulli. Okay, so we were at the point where we had our approximations for improved Euler method, and we wanted to determine the exact solution. Looking at the differential equation, it did not appear to be of any of the types we know how to solve analytically. We confirmed this by trying to have Sage solve this analytically, to be told by Sage that it can't be solved analytically. Uh, and this will happen with problems, right? You know, sometimes that's why you're going to numerics in the first place, is there is no analytic solution. Uh, so in order to get a sense of the error, you would typically use a better method. And you would think of the better method solution as the exact solution, and then use that to determine error. You know, it seems a little silly. Why not just use the better solution as your solution? Um, uh, but that's how it's typically done. So uh, we will hold off on this because we are going to do a better method with Rungakutta, and we'll do the same problem, and we'll use that to determine the error. In the meantime, we are done analyzing this method by hand. Uh, you can adjust the step size and make it smaller to get better accuracy. And the relationship is that this method is order h squared as opposed to Euler method, which is order h. So that means cutting the step size in half cuts your error by a fourth, h squared. So uh, that's always something that's part of the normal analysis. Taking the same problem, let's go to implementing it with Sage. So the code is already written up for you. The numerical methods with Sage sheet, file, yeah, file. You just need to scroll down past the Euler's method stuff to where it says improved Euler's method. And we don't have an exact solution. Uh, but you would modify that if you did have an exact solution, such as your lab assignment where you've given the exact solution. And uh, for f, x, comma, y, that's where you put in the derivative. So we have that derivative. It is right here. So x squared plus y squared minus 3xy minus 3y. So let's put that in squared plus y squared minus 3xy minus 3y. 3 times x times y minus 3 times y. Put in your initial conditions. The initial value for x is 0 and for y is 2. Put in the step size, in this case 0.05 and then tell it to run. Right. So uh, if you're not using the exact solution, then you don't want to refer to that in the graph. So let me just tell it to show the approximate solution in the graph. Right. And there's a look at our approximate solution yeah. And we're going to see is that when we see those numbers that were stored in this array L, that the first couple ones should be close to, if not identical, to what we calculated by hand. In theory, it should be identical to the number of digits we got. So remember what our first one was? 1.8906875. Does that sound familiar? Our old friend Y1? And then what about y2? Is this what we had? 1.76378400 is what I wrote. So it is exactly up to where it's rounded. You get a little more accuracy here with Sage. Um, and it should be. It's doing the exact same thing we did. It's just carrying more digits. Yes? Now, I guess for the exact, are we going to be given what, what the exact is, or can we derive the exact from differential equations? So yeah, if you're given one you know how to solve, you can find the exact, 
there's going to be some where we'll give you the exact solution. So on the lab, they tell you the exact solution on the lab because I don't know if you can solve it. Um, okay. And then there's problems like the one I chose now where we can't solve it. We don't have an exact solution. That's more uh, typical of what it would be like in a real world problem. And uh, we'll talk about how to use a more advanced method to error check. Uh, we're going to be using Rungakutta to error check. You can't get the exact error, but you can get an estimate of it. Okay. To get the exact error or absolute error, you would need to know the exact solution. Okay. All right, so that's it for improved Euler.